Hi guys, this is Rashid and welcome back. Today we would like to show you our big boy here, the AT Crawler Basic. This UTV is using two DC brush motor which can provide high capacity load. It uses this two rubber track to grip and crawl on any of tough terrains and it's good for outdoor application like agriculture and safe and rescue robot. So it comes with this high power motor driver which you can choose to control either by PDBM signal or by ROS topic. For today I'm going to show you how we can control this UGV by ROS and if you're ready, let's get started. Here is the motor driver which comes with the AT Crawler Basic. Input power is varied from 3 cell to 10 cell battery but I recommend to use with 6 cell battery. It could handle two channels left and right motors. There is USB Type-C here for ROS communication and these pin headers are for PDF input signal. Next there is SBUS input port for radio receiver and the growth connector here is for the IMU BNO 055. It needs to use with aluminum heatsink so the driver fets could stay cool all the time. And here is the AT Crawler basic platform. So we put the motor driver on the controller box lid to keep the airflow on the heatsink. The XT connector is used on input and output ports and here is the battery connector for Makita battery. I'm using this tiny Nook computer running Ubuntu 20.04 for ROS1 and ROS2. Beside of it is DC-DC regulator, custom designed from us to provide stable 5 and 12 volt and two USB port. And this white router is from GL INET, so I can SSH to the robot. And the RC receivers connects on SBUS port and the BNO055 breakout board so we can get IMU data on ROS topic. Here are the motors and cable outside. So basically this motor driver is communicating on this USB-C port and is uh, using ROS1 topic. So you can get the data of the IMU and uh, radio receivers uh, of the SBUS value and uh, you can control on the left and right wheels the speed by sending the PDBM command. And I have made the utilities package called MD100A ROS1 util and uh, MD100A ROS2 util. So you can find these two package in this github.com, a track lab and uh, uh, package name. So the, this package is simply do simple things to just convert the command velocity from the navigation program, which can be a navigation stack or by your ROS program, and then convert it to the PDM command for the uh, topic that this motors going to use to drive the wheels. And here is the dependencies that you will need to install for the ROS1 and this is for the ROS2 version. So you will need a ROS1 bridge to communicating between the ROS1 and ROS2 environment. So please install uh, everything exactly same here. So now I already plugged the battery on the robot and everything is booting up properly. So I can access the robot Wi-Fi and then log into the robot terminal and then trying to start each node individually. And then I'm going to send the command velocity from my laptop to control this robot. So you will see here, there's a webcam that pointing to the robot. Then once I send the command, you will see how it moves. So first I will need to open the terminal and then log into the robot. And then first I will source the ROS1 uh, environment. And then I'm going to run ROS call. But next, I need to log into the robot once more time. So for the second terminal, I'm going to run the ROS run zero node, which is going to get the data from the motor driver. This terminal, we need to run ROS run and ROS zero. If the USB is plugging on, then uh, you will see that um, there is a ROS topic that communicating between the motor driver and the computer. Now I can open another terminal here, log into the robot. 
So you will see that there is a topics that's showing here. So most of my robot, I will have the RC radio receiver and transmitter plugging on. So I can take control the robot all the time, even when the program is crashed. So I can take control on the robot manually from here and then everything will be safe. So we can also read the SBUS value by doing lost topic, echo and MD100A and SBARS RC channel. So you will see that uh, the SBUS value is coming. If I change some switch here, you will see that the data got changed. And I can also control the robot in manually. So here I switch to manual mode and you will see that I can control the robot by the radio controller. So for someone who just need ROS1, then you just need the MD100A ROS1 util. I can just run um, ROS run MD100A ROS1 util and then run command velocity converter.py and then it's going to start. So back to our laptop, if I source our ROS environment here, and then if I run ROS run RQT robot steering, RQT robot steering, then there will be the command velocity GUI pop out. So if I change the control mode into the auto, which is this switch, then now the ROS will take control of the movement for the robot. Then now I can send the command velocity from this GUI to move this car. So let's see. You will see it moves forward and then it's moved backward and then stop. So it can try to turn to the left and also try to turn to the right. And try to go forward again. Okay, so next I'm going to show you how we can control this in ROS2. So basically you will just need the ROS1 bridge package which I already installed. Let me try logging out and then logging in one more time. So we need to source the ROS environment properly otherwise it won't work. So first we need to source the ROS1 environment and then next we need to source the uh, ROS2 which is the galactic. And then we need to source the dev workspace where the ROS1 bridge is installed. We can run by uh, put ROS2 run ROS1 bridge and the node is dynamic bridge. So we just keep ROS core and ROS0 node running all the time. So I will open another terminal here. So I would just need to source ROS2 environment. I just need to run ROS2 run MD100A ROS2 utils and uh, command velocity converter. I will open new terminal. I'm going to source ROS2 environment. Then I'm going to run ROS2 run RQT robot steering, RQT robot steering. Then you will see that the RQT robot steering GUI is popping out. So we we'll try sending the command velocity to control this car, which is from ROS2. Then I will try to move backward. And then try to go forward again. So you can see that we can control this AT crawler basic by sending either ROS1 topic or ROS2 topic. So next let's try to do more interesting applications. So I'm going to put more stuff on the robot and try to run it again. Here is the survey search and inspection robot. I will control this robot from the web console and we could see the environment around the robot. The lower camera here is OGD which has AI built in and depth sensor. I'm going to use it for human detection. The upper camera here is Sakti optical zoom gimbal camera. I have made a video of using this camera with ROS2 before. 
So I will use this as an inspection camera. And for better mobile signal reception, I put the mobile router outside on this pole. Inside of the control box, you will see the motor driver on the lid similar as before and the same tiny nook to run our application program. With some add-on for the camera and sensor, I think this AT crawler is ready for the mission. Before we go out, I would like to confirm that everything is running properly. So I'm accessing the web console from my laptop and you could see that the video streaming is working, human detection is working, and also if I switch the mode on transmitter, the operation mode will also change on the console. Now let's confirm we could control it by moving this joystick. So far, I think everything is working fine, so let's go test this outside. Here, I'm outside with the robot, and I'm going to control it from my iPad. The caller could climb up down on a little step with no problem and the SACD gimbal also could stabilize a shaking motion. I am using WebRTC for communication from the robot to the operator, so you will see we can control mostly in real time. And that's for today's video, I hope you guys like it. And if you would like to have this A3 Caller Basic as your new robot project platform, please check out on attractlab-shop.com. I've also prepared documentation where you can just follow along how to install and hardware diagram to make your robot project up running quickly. So for the next time, I'm trying to use this motor driver with the Q-Pilot. So the flight controller will be taken care of by the Ado pilot and we can do some interesting stuff like the GPS navigation. So if you like this kind of video, please press like and share button. Thank you for watching and see you soon.